Okay, I want to thank all of you very, very much for being here today in the middle of your busy day at noon, November the 4th. This is a very important day. I'm Yvonne Brandon with Public Schools First NC, and we're here today to stand up and speak up for our teachers who are at this very moment in the classroom, they're in the media center, they're in the cafeteria, they're on the playground watching and helping and working with our over one and a half million students working with them to learn and, and achieve and be successful. They're busy right now putting our students first. So we're here to speak up for them and to support our public school teachers. Never before has the teaching profession undergone such dramatic upheaval. And, and why? Because there's a fairy tale being spun by those who do not support public education. It's a very captivating Story, or at least it seems to have captivated many of the members of the General Assembly. You've heard it many times. Our schools are failing, public education is broken, we must fix it. Of course, you have to blame somebody when you have a mythical failure for this mythical failure, and that has become, unfortunately, our classroom teacher. Well, when you diagnose the wrong disease, you treat the patient accordingly. The patient will not get better. That's exactly what's happened and why we are here today. Our teachers are excelling every day, folks. Do not think that's not it. Ninety-six percent of our teachers have earned the rating of proficient, and North Carolina has more national board certified teachers than any state in the nation. are not failing, but we do know the challenges are growing. Half of North Carolina's public school students live in poverty, and poverty is a mighty force that weighs heavily against a child's success in the classroom. On top of that, our schools are underfunded, and they've been underfunded for years. We have been watching our classroom resources dry up and disappear year after year. In the past four years alone, North Carolina public schools have lost over 17,000 positions, laying off more than 6,200 teachers and teacher assistants, while the number of public school students has grown by about 16,000. Does this make sense to you? No. <laughs> that we cut our professional staff and we're adding thousands of students, we take away our teacher assistants, we're cramming our classroom is full of more and more students, and we are expecting miracles from our teachers. Poverty, friends, and lack of funding, not teachers, have held public education back and make it more and more challenging for our students. So we're here today because of those who do not support public education have misdiagnosed what ails our schools. They have thrown their weight behind legislation focused on getting rid of ineffective teachers. The wrong treatment. What we should be focused on is how are we going to keep our effective teachers. According to the Center for Public Education, having an effective teacher consistently rises to the top as the number one most important factor in student learning. And further, experience, advanced degrees, subject-specific certifications, these are the things that are critical to our students achieving. The substantial research by Dr. Helen Lagg and her colleagues right over here at Duke University underscores the tremendous benefit our children realize when they are educated by experienced teachers. The question that we should be asking our elected leaders and what our elected leaders ought to be focused on is how do we recruit and train the very best teachers? Instead, here's what we've been getting. One, we take away the teacher's career status, forcing our teachers into temporary year-by-year -year contracts without protection for retaliatory or arbitrary firing. Is this a reasonable way to keep our best teachers? No! We see the elimination of additional pay for earning advanced degrees, basically saying there's no value in continued professional development, even though research shows over and over again that professional development by teachers 
improves student achievement. Does this make sense to you? No! Is it a reasonable way to encourage our teacher? Does it make sense to discourage our teacher from professional development and advanced degrees? No! Would we want this for our own children, for our own, our own companies, for our own labor forces? No, no way. Finally, we see the efforts to establish a poorly crafted merit pay plan that sets up competition with little financial reward and destroys the cooperation and the teamwork that is the heart and soul of excellent teaching. Again, is this how we want to run our schools? No! Is this how our teachers deserve to be treated? No! While well, our state legislators have misdiagnosed the problem. But you know what? Good news. They've also underestimated the strong commitment that their constituents, that we here today, and many like us all across the state of North Carolina today, the commitment we have to our teachers. A recent statewide poll confirms that we are united in support of our public school teachers. 76% of North Carolinians think that public school teachers are paid too little. Do you agree? Yes! 71% of citizens across our state think that we cannot keep the best and most qualified teachers with the current pay scale. You agree? Yes! And 83% of our citizens think that teachers deserve and should receive a pay increase for completing a master's degree. Agree? Yes! Absolutely. Makes common sense, right? Yes! North Carolina already loses too many teachers after the first three years of teaching. Now we're facing a severe shortage of professionally trained and certified teachers. And these new laws, these new budget cuts, are driving more qualified teachers in public schools. And instead of acknowledging the importance of our great teachers and working, as governor after governor have done for 40 years, we see that our teachers are undervalued, underpaid, and discouraged at every turn. It's no wonder some considered a walkout. We are here today to stand up and consider it a walkout, but hold on. Wrong page, last page. The evidence is overwhelming folks in support of our teachers. We must communicate our support right now to our elected representatives we must turn this around now before it is too late. Putting our teachers on one-year contracts this coming July makes it nearly impossible for them to speak up over fear of losing their jobs. So we must be the united voice of our teachers. It is time for parents, grandparents, business and civic leaders to speak up and stand up for our teachers. This walk-out, walk-in, is on its way to being a walk away. We cannot afford that outcome for our children. Thank you for coming today.